Hello and thanks for watching. This is Erica Douglas from erica.biz and this video I'm going to show you how to create an online survey so that you can survey your customers, users, blog readers, whatever you'd like using a tool that's absolutely free, which is totally awesome. I'm going to show you exactly how I use this for my own audience as well. So the tool that we're going to be using is Google Docs, D-O-C-S, and to get there, just go to docs.google.com. Again, that's D-O-C-S dot Google dot com. And you're gonna see a page that looks like what you're seeing right now on this video. And over here on the right, you'll see a thing that says sign in to Google Docs with your Google account. So go ahead and do that now. And you can use any gmail.com account, any account that you use for Google Calendar or any other Google service to sign in here. If you don't have a Google, Google account, go ahead and click this get started button right here and it'll show you to set up a Google account. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in and then I'll take you through how to set up a free online survey. So once you're into Google Docs, you'll see uh, a window that shows either where you can create a new item or the current items that you have available right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to create new and then we're gonna to go to form. So at the top here, you're going to name your survey. And for instance, I named mine Erica.biz Reader Survey. And then I said February 2010. And then this is the text that's going to show at the top of the survey when people are completing it. I'm going to assume that you have some idea of how you want to survey your readers. So instead of walking you through every single possible question you might have, I'm going to show you a few quick examples of how to use the interface to create a survey. So this is the question title and the question type. This is the important part. So text is one line of text that they can use to answer it. Paragraph text is a longer answer. Multiple choice is exactly what it sounds. And then this is the cool part. You can actually set it up so that your first question uh, does what's called segmenting. So some people will respond, you know, are you a blogger? Yes or no? Okay, if you're a blogger, it actually goes to a different page in the survey based on the answer. So um, I'll do a quick demo of that here in just a minute. Check boxes are exactly what they sound like. Choose from a list is exactly what it sounds like. A scale is a scale from one to five, 10, et cetera. And it's maybe like, how would you rate our service during the last quarter? Something like that if you're running a customer survey or a grid. And I don't see the grid used very often, but some of you may find that useful. And then just a quick walk through the interface right over here, you have this is where you're editing currently. You're editing this question, so that is highlighted. This, you can duplicate a question. Um, you'll see on my survey in just a minute that I used that to duplicate a couple of questions. And then if you decide you don't want a question, you can, of course, delete it. So let's go back to the question. Let's say, are you a blogger? And we're gonna use this to decide what page they go to in the next part of the survey. So we're gonna say multiple choice. Go to page based on answer. And then notice here it says choose page break from the add item menu to add additional pages. I'm gonna show you that right now. And option one is yes. And then just click here to add another option. Option two is no. And then we're gonna add item. We're gonna add a page break. Then we're gonna add a page title. This might be for bloggers. And now that we've added our page for bloggers only, we're gonna add a new page and just go up here and add item page break again. And I'm gonna title that page, everyone else. Going back up here to our first question, click edit. And then if you can see here, question yes, go to page two, bloggers. And then if they say no, go to page three, everyone else. So that kind of allows you to design a flow for your survey. And of course, in this case, we're going to want to make this a required question. Then just click done when you're done editing. So then this little red star appears next to the question, which means it is required. And let's say if they're a blogger, we wanna ask them what they blog about. Now we go back up to add item. And what do they blog about? It's probably a paragraph text. So we add that and notice it went down here in page three. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to fix that. So what do you blog about? Let's make this a required question, but this is only gonna be for bloggers. 
So then what you can do is you can see it's down here in page three, so you just click and drag and move it up to page two. A couple of things I want to point out, more actions embed will allow you to embed it on your page. And I also like this edit confirmation. Let's click on that and see how the confirmation says, thanks, your response will now appear in my spreadsheet. That's what you see after you complete the survey as an end user. I would definitely recommend changing that. I typically would leave this box unchecked, which means basically if that, if you check that box, it lets everybody see what in aggregate, what everybody else's responses were to the survey. So I definitely don't recommend that um, for most surveys. However, in some cases, if you want your responses to be public, that might be a good option. So go ahead and that's edit confirmation up here in the more actions. And then of course, you'll wanna click save when you're done with your survey and mine has already been saved. Also at the top, you can click email this form and that pops up a quick window so that you can send the form directly to other people. In my case, I'm gonna embed it on my website instead. So to embed it, go up here at more actions, embed, and then just paste that code into your blog or website. You, it really can't get any easier. I literally pasted that code into my WordPress blog and I had the survey set up on my site. So that's amazing about Google Docs. One last thing that you can do up here is the theme. Uh, it's, it's selected plain right now. You can see that's pretty much, it's actually is gonna look exactly like this to a reader. You know, it's blue and white, pretty basic. So you can click on that and you get all kinds of different choices. And for my survey, I picked a theme called Head or Blue, which is on like the third page of themes. So there you go. And now it looks like that and just click apply to apply that color scheme to your survey. All right, so you've seen the basics of how to set up a survey with Google Docs. Let's go ahead and take a look at my survey. When you click on your survey in Google Docs, assuming that you've already set it up and embedded it on your website, you're going to see something that looks like this. And the cool thing about Google Docs is that your survey really is a spreadsheet, so you can export your survey results out into Excel. There's a couple important things I wanna show you when it comes to looking at your survey results. You can see down here, it's this long, long scroll window of exactly all of the responses that I've gotten. Um, up here at the top, there's this thing that says form and mine says 323. That's how many responses I received. So I received 323 responses. I wanna show you the summary of responses. So this opens a cool little chart type of thing that tells you exactly what my readers responded with in aggregate. So my first question was, what stage of owning a business are you in? And here are the responses over here on the right. You might have to scroll a little bit if you have long responses like I do. And here are the actual numbers, 15 responded this way, 64, et cetera. Here are the percentages. And here's the actual graph that tells you at a glance what your survey respondents said. And as you can see, the different responses generate different types of graphs. There's some pie charts or some bar charts. And if there's a long question that's just you know a text entry, this is a sort of preview of some of the responses. So these are the first you know 10 or 15 people who've responded. If you've had a lot of responses, what you're gonna wanna do is close this out and then go back to your spreadsheet and just read the responses in the spreadsheet or export it out to Excel if you prefer. And once you're done with your survey, one thing you do wanna do is probably go here and uncheck this thing that says accepting responses. That means people will no longer be able to take your survey. One final thing I'd like to point out is how quickly and easily you can export it. So you just go to file, download as, and then you can pick different types of files so you can put it into Excel, you can put it into OpenOffice, and you can use those tools to further data mine and figure out exactly what your readers or customers want. So that's Google Docs. It's a free, easy way to create a complete survey. It's, in my opinion, as good as or better than most of the paid survey tools out there. Plus, it allows you to easily export into Excel, which most of the other tools don't. And it's a huge benefit because your data is in an open format so that you don't have to be restricted to continually paying for a service just to keep your survey data. That's quick and easy how to create a free survey in Google Docs. Enjoy! This is Erica Douglas from erica.biz.